everybody welcome back to my channel for a update video on how Clayton's tendon release surgery has gone um, I just thought I would I, I talked about a little bit of this in my plan with me but I thought that I, since I'm so random in my plan with me is I just kind of chit chat about whatever's on my brain at the moment I thought that I would try to tell it in a more fluid um, way just by vlogging just for a few minutes um, we went to Memphis on the 9th and had a had an appointment with the doctor and um, got all our ducks lined up and made sure everybody was on the same page and we planned for Clayton to have tendon releases in his hamstrings his adductors and his um, heel cords and so that is what happened on Thursday he was scheduled for the OR at 8 and then the doctor had a cancellation but they didn't tell us that so when we got to the hospital at 6 they were moving along they were trying to get us ready to get into the OR and ready to go um, so everything kind of happened faster than it normally happens when you get there in the morning so Clayton was being real brave. He was doing really good. He was wanting to talk to Dr. Kelly. He was wanting to talk to the nurses and you know, he was concerned about if he was going to get to ride in one of the hospital wheelchairs because that's just what he wants to do. He wants to check out all the equipment and we were like, your wheelchair is so much better. Why would you even care about those hospital wheelchairs? But he wanted to do that. But anyway, so he was talking to the nurses about that. Um, and then when it came down to leaving him, when we had to leave him and they went one way and we went the other, he broke down and cried and it was horrible. The older he gets, the harder it is, you know, there for so long, um, when he was first born, I mean, that was his life and that was so normal for us that we just lived with it and whisking him off to the OR that was just normal it was hard but it was normal and plus when he was younger he wasn't as cognitively aware of what was going on and so it wasn't as hard because he didn't really know so but now he knows and he and he's scared and he doesn't want to do it so watching him cry and scream and you could hear him screaming when we went to the waiting room you could still hear him screaming like behind two sets of closed doors while he was in the OR so it was not good so they got him going and then it was probably like I'm trying to think like a three or four hour surgery so I'm thinking we went he went into the OR right around seven and then he I guess they called us right before noon so that's you know three or four hours and um so anyway i'm getting distracted by what's happening in the other room because mama cannot escape for any videos without chaos happening um at any rate so we went back there and immediately we realized he was in so much pain because he was hurting from the surgery but the reason he was hurting was because his legs were spasming like they always do but now he's doing it with um, cut tendons and shaved muscles and so it was not a good thing that to watch I mean because he was literally like reflexing constantly and um, they were giving him you know max doses of morphine and it wasn't even touching it so it was really hard to watch that and I kind of knew that was going to come but I didn't know his muscles were I mean they were just constant flex constant flex <clears throat> and um anyway so finally the anesthesiologist ordered some Valium and the Valium seemed to calm those spasms down thankfully so we got upstairs in a room and the first night was horrible because Clayton is a side sleeper he had two cast on both legs are casted from his knees down and he has a wedge pillow neo mobilizers and a wedge pillow 
and the doctor wanted that wedge pillow and neomobilizers to stay on basically for a week and don't take it off for any reason. And so that first night, of course, Clayton, as he started waking up more for the anesthesia, anesthesia, sorry, as he started waking up from that, he wanted to take it off, take it off. That's all he kept saying, take it off. And you're like, we can't take it off. I'm sorry, but we can't take it off. And then Clayton likes to sleep on his side. Well, you can't really sleep on your side when you have a big wedge pillow in between your legs. And so it was just a wrestling match all night long that first night. I stayed there with him. Brian stayed at um, the house that the hospital provides for parents that are from out of town. And it was all night long. And then dealing with, you know, bathroom issues and all that stuff, it was just... It was very hairy that first day. And then the next day, the doctor comes in. It wasn't his doctor. It was the doctor's um, partner. He came in. He's like, why don't y'all, y'all want to go home today? If he gets up in the wheelchair, we'll send you home. <sighs> and I was like, I really don't want to go home yet. I mean, us living so far away, and if there's any problems. Anyway, the PT came later on that afternoon, got him in the wheelchair, and they were actually going to send us home that first day, but there ended up being an issue with the insurance and the amount of Valium that they wanted to send us home with. Insurance wouldn't pay for, or wouldn't allow the amount of Valium, the volume of Valium that they were gonna send us home with. So they paid for another night in the hospital, which was fine with me because I felt like we needed it and um, just needed that extra day. They always want to send you home so fast. But by the next day, Clayton was definitely ready to go home. He was mad, mad, mad. He was so mad because of the pain. And I think the pain medicine makes him irritable. And I was tired because the second night probably wasn't really any better than the first night. And so it took us almost all day long to get discharged. And we finally got discharged. That was on Saturday. We got home. And Clayton's mood was so much better when we got home. Of course, his granny was here. He was excited to see her so much better. But by the next day, we were back to grouchy Clayton, and rightfully so. I mean, he was def I mean, he definitely had a right to be grouchy because, I mean, we couldn't move him for anything because he wanted to constantly turn to lay on his side, but he also every time we moved him, we were those incisions, because he has three sets of incisions. One set in his groin, one set on the back of his thigh, and one set under the cast in his heel cords. So every time we moved him, we were kind of moving those incisions and pulling on them, and oh, it was just not good. And yeah, I don't know. The pain is so was so bad for him. And him trying to get away from the pain, you know. So every night, we're on day, let's see, today is, I don't even know what today is, the 20th. So we're on day 10, something like that. And he still has not had a good night's rest. And that means I haven't had a good night's rest. Because Brian, I feel like I'm the one that needs to stay in the bed with him at night. Because Brian has to be at work the next morning. And has to be coherent and thinking and if you're up all night wrestling with Clayton then there's just no way you can function the next day at work so I feel like I'm the one that has to do that but at any rate I mean the our we've gotten through the first hurdle the actual surgery we've gotten through the um the initial pain and now we have to get through the stretching. He doesn't have to have the wedge pillow all the time now. He doesn't have to wear the neo mobilizers all the time now, but he needs to have them on a lot in order to take advantage of the, um, the stretchiness or the flexibility that the tendon releases have given his muscles. And he's fine with the neo mobilizers, but the wedge pillow, I mean, he, is crying like crying when you put it in and then Friday 
he was crying so much that Jackson started crying. And Jackson didn't understand. Why does he have to hurt? Why does he have to hurt? And I hated to be a mean mama, but I said, this surgery that we, I tried to explain it to Jackson. I said, it's not going to be worth anything if we don't help Clayton's muscles stretch because they're just going to go back to like they were if we don't stretch him. So I think Jackson kind of understands, but he just hated watching Clayton hurt. And I don't like watching Clayton hurt either. And tonight when I put the wedge pillow on him, same deal, crying. I mean, crying. And he doesn't cry as much if he's laying more flat, like on the couch or in the bed. But if he's sitting up in his chair and you put the wedge pillow on, it really pulls his hamstrings and he hurts. So this surgery is definitely not for the faint of heart because it hurts. I mean, but I know that if it's done right and the recovery is done right, then it will be so good for Clayton and so good for his mobility. I mean, he's not ever, unless God heals him, not ever going to be completely mobile, obviously, but he'll at least be able to help us more if he can overcome some of that high tone that he has in his muscles. So that's, I guess, installment one. And I was going to vlog all of that. Like, I was going to, at the hospital, you know, keep up with his recovery in a vlog format. But I'm telling y'all, he hurt so bad. I mean, it's just, it was something constant. He needed something constantly. There was no time to even pick up a camera. I mean, I thought that I was going to edit photos and get some galleries for clients ready. I thought that I was going to read. I had like three or four library books. I thought, oh, we're just going to sit in the hospital room and have a good time. Not have a good time, but, you know, he's going to rest and I'm just going to be quiet time. Mm-mm. I mean, it was just constant movement, and then that's the way it's been this week. It's just been, he needs something constantly. So I'm hoping that this next week, which is going to be Thanksgiving week, will be a little bit easier. Um, it's it, The last couple of days have been a lot calmer, except for the wedge pillow times. Um, he actually went to church today, and I think that did his heart some good, because he... He loves church, been asking about church, so it was nice for him to get out. And um, it was hard after being awake half the night, but we managed to make it there. And hopefully the next week or so will be better. So I'll update more on the stretching, and I'll try to get some video of Clayton. But right now, I mean, literally, I haven't had time to even think about picking up a camera when I'm with him or, you know, when during the day because I'm just thinking about how can I make him more comfortable? How can I make him more comfortable? And it's been hard. So, um, anyway, it, has, it hasn't been anything that we, I mean, we've been through harder, but it's definitely been one of those weeks. But anyway, I hope that that gives you all um, who are curious about how he was doing. So if you want to pray for Clayton, thank you for praying. I know so many of you have prayed for Clayton. If you want to pray for him, just pray that he will be able to sleep at night because if he sleeps, then mama sleeps and then everybody's happy in the morning and pray that he'll be able to tolerate the stretching exercises that we're going to have to do. So we see the doctor um, on Wednesday and we'll see what he says as far as what's next on the recovery. Um, but I think it's just lots of stretching. So hopefully Clayton will get on board with that. But anyway, thank you all for your concern and for your thoughts. I really appreciate the messages that we've gotten. And I've passed them on to Clayton. Um, but um, hopefully that will give you all an idea of where we are at with our tendon release surgery. I hope that you all have a great Thanksgiving, and I hope that um, you get to spend it with everybody that you love, or you get to see or talk to everybody that you love, and um, I'm thankful for you guys, and um, I'm counting my blessings this year. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.